Yeah, so welcome everyone. We are covering this computer vision module of deep learning practice. So I hope you have already gone through the other two modules, the NLP and speech. So this is the vision module. So first of all, um, what is the goal of computer vision? So the goal is to extract meaning from the picture, meaning from pixels. So when we see this image, we see that a train has crashed through a station. But a computer, when it sees, it just sees number. It just sees a series of number, a matrix. Basically, it sees a matrix of numbers. So, but what we want is the we want the computer also also to see like us. Basically, we want to computer also to perceive how we perceive. So that is the goal of computer vision. So basically, giving the vision to computer. That is the goal of computer vision. There are generally given the image or video, we can generally extract two kinds of information. One is the semantic information, another is the metric information. Metric means measurement, semantics means more like grammar, like objects and all. Given an image or video, generally we are interested in either of these, okay, or maybe both of these. So as a source of semantic information, so when we are given an image, we are interested in finding in, out how many objects are there what kind of objects are there? For example, when we see this image, we can see there are buses, there are cars, and there is a building, and all these things, right? And the walls are vertical, all these things. So these are kind of the semantics or grammar. What we are interested in is labeling each of these objects. So buses, bus, cars, and all these things, street, banner, flag, all these things. So this is one kind of, like this is basically a semantic task where we are interested in giving names to each objects. We want to also localize them. So this is semantic. And not only that, we can also look at the overall scene, that it is a city scene, and it is outdoor, and it has traffic. So all these kind of, we can do a um, scene categorization, context categorization. So all of these comes under semantic task. And on the other hand, we also have, we can also use vision as a measurement device. For example, let's say I want to measure the distance of objects. So one, um, the usual way of doing it is stereo, like um, we take two cameras and then look at the scene and from there we can get the depth. Actually our eyes are also stereo because we have two eyes and therefore we can extract the depth. So this is, um, stereo is the most um, popular way for extracting depth. Then you can also do also, I mean there are also ways in which from a single image also we can get depth. Because even our, when, when, if we close one of our eyes, we can still get that perception of depth. There are some cues that we use. Then we can also look at structure from motion, which is um, basically not just two images or one image, but we collect a series of image, multi-view image, or we take a, one video camera and then roam around and take the video, which is, which is nothing but a series of images. And then we can actually find the structure, the 3D structure, as well as the motion of the camera. So that's structure from motion. And also there are, uh, we can also download just the images. Let's say we download images of um, Taj Mahal. And then from there, we can actually uh, create a 3D model for Taj Mahal. So these are all means that we are using it as a measurement device. More or less, we are measuring the depth of the object or 3D points, point cloud, and we are also getting the camera poses. So this is also another utility of vision. So basically, th these are the two utilities. So we'll look at some of the semantic computer vision task. So for example, the first thing that comes to mind is object recognition. Like just given this, for example, this image, we know that it is a container ship or this image, we know that it is leopard, like that. So just more or less, the image has one dominant object and we just want to label that object. What are we seeing? So that is called object recognition. And there is a famous data, data set and challenge called ImageNet Challenge, which has some thousand, um, which has thousand classes, like might, container ship and all. And each class have thousand instances, examples. So like that, this challenge is there. Using that, we can do recognition. Anyways, in general, recognition means that you have uh, more or less one dominant object in the image and you want to say what that object is. In general, it will not be just one object, but multiple objects, right? For example, if I look at this indoor scene, there are so many objects here, plate, sofa, pillow, all these things. And uh, so what we want ideally is to do object detection. 
which means we want to localize where each object is there, right? For example, plate is localized here. All, all kind of things, clock is localized here. And not only localize objects, but also name them what object it is. So it is more challenging this, than just recognizing one object in the whole image. And this is called object detection. Of course, this is very useful. For example, faces also, like when we take images, um, our cameras, like it, most of them has this face recognition, at least face detection, right? We detect the face, so like that. And then we can also look at, for example, this is a traffic scene where it is detecting pedestrian cars and all kinds of objects. So this is definitely very useful. Um, then another task is also um, face, related to face. You can also, again, do the same thing, localize, detect, and classify. And this is used for security, um, security camera, like passport office and all, they will use this. Then uh, number plate reader is also another example where vision has a use case. So for example, if you have an image like that, so we should be able to localize first of all, then recognize each of these letters. So that is what number plate reader means. Okay. So of course, these are all very, very practical examples like which we would like to solve problems which you would like to solve. Image segmentation is like you are given an image and you want to segment uh, semantically similar objects or semantically similar pixels. Each pixel you want to segment or label it. So this is like clustering. And uh, for example, all these pixels which belongs to road, they should be segmented as same, uh, belonging to the same semantic class. Same way for all the pixels, that are in the car should be um, basically segmented as belonging to the same object, which is car, like that. So this is the segmentation problem, and this also has use cases. For example, if you're driving, if you want to do automatic driving, then you need to find out where your road is, right? Only there you will drive, and you, you also need to find out where pedestrians are and all, so that, and other cars are, so that you can avoid them. So this is also a very important task in computer vision. Then there are other tasks like object tracking, like if you have a video and people moving around, then you would like to track the people or cars and all. Um, then also pose estimation, for example, like you have some person and then you would like to estimate the pose of the person, dancer and all. So all these are activity recognitions, means uh, you want to find out what activity they are doing. So, so for example, they are playing volleyball, or even you can do who is in standing position, who is in blocking position. All these um, activities you can do. Generally, these are these are uh, video related to videos, and um, then we have also image captioning, where we have given an image, and then you want to say what is the content in that image. So basically, it's uh, image to language translation. So you have an image, and then you want to summarize the image using language. For example, this image is a person riding on a motorcycle on a dirt road. Like that, for each image you want to do that. So that is called image captioning. This is also a very important problem to solve. And uh, what we had discussed till now is semantic, right? It is trying to have some grammar meaning. Uh, but now wh what we come to is geometry computer vision, which is for measurement, which is basically for depth and all. So as we have said, the famous example is depth from stereo. Like if you are given two images, then you can actually do this point correspondence, find out where this object has gone in the other image. And once you have it, you can triangulate to get the depth. So, and this, once you do that, you can then measure how far that object is from the camera. So this is very useful. And um, as we have said earlier also, our eyes are stereo, and that is what we use for measuring depth. If I have to hold anything very close to my eyes, I will. I need this stereo vision. So stereo vision is for measuring depth. Then we can also actually get from a single image, uh, depth from a single image. Because um, even if I, so generally, if I use stereo, for example, here, we have a geometric way of measuring. Because I can do this point correspondence, and then I can triangulate it, and then I will find out how far it is. So it is geometrically accurate. But if we have a single image, then we cannot do a geometrically correct uh, depth estimation. But we still get some relative idea of depth. Like, for example, we can look at if some, some object is occluding another object, then the 
object which is occluding another object is in front of the object that is being occluded. So like these kind of cues or we can take the cue of size. We know what a car looks like. So if the if it appears that a car, like let's say it's a road scene and there are multiple cars, the car which is bigger should be the car which is closer to me. So based on size, based on occlusion, based on shadow, actually from single image also there are many cues that we can use for getting depth. So this is also a very interesting problem and nowadays many deep learning and CNN solutions are there for doing this. Uh, then we have this structure for motion where it is like multiple, so it is a multi view like uh, multiple cameras either it is multiple cameras looking at the same scene or you can take one camera and then move it around capture multiple images or a video and then your goal is to find out uh, the location the 3D basically you want to re reconstruct the 3D. For example like this castle you want to reconstruct the castle so you have taken images from various viewpoints. And now you want to reconstruct, like basically get the 3D model for the castle. So this can be done from structure for motion and you also get the camera pose. So this is called structure for motion, it's also a very interesting problem. Then there are other ways of getting structure also, uh, for example is photometric stereo. Here you keep the camera fix, but what you do is change the lighting and you capture multiple images with various lightings. And they give you the uh, basically shading, shading cue is what you get and from those shading cue you can actually find out the surface normal. And once you get the surface normal you get also get the depth. So this is another way of reconstructing depth or we can say surfaces, surface normal. So, so these are few of the techniques, so basically stereo, stereo imaging, then it is monocular imaging, then structure for motion, photometric stereo, all of this gives us depth in some sense. So these are like geometric uh, computer vision and before that we have looked at semantic computer vision. So we have seen many examples of these computer vision systems but we should also know what are the challenges uh, that we need to solve for doing any of this like recognition or depth estimation, what are the challenges that we face that we should know. So one of the challenge is this viewpoint variation. For example, let's say our goal is to do face recognition. Now usually we are used to seeing face which are upright, right? And uh, so if I train my machine using just upright faces but during testing I give a face which it has never seen in the sense that the face is the same face but uh, it's a different orientation, different viewpoint. In that case most likely my machine will fail, the algorithm will fail. So that's why, so this is a challenge. So of course you can, one way of handling it is you do some augmentation and while training you give augmented images of various viewpoints and all so that you can solve it. But in general it is a challenge. If we don't uh, do it properly we can face challenge. So this is a viewpoint variation. Another uh, very interesting challenge is illumination. So it, this is the same scene, we, sh we are showing three images, same scene taken, the only difference is camera is also same, the only difference is the lighting has changed. For example, we can see here in the first image the light is at the center um, and in the second image maybe it is in the top and this image somewhere on the right So because you can see the shadows. So here in the center image there are no shadows. So it's very, they look very very different but all of them actually is the same scene. So this shows how much variations are there if we don't, I mean because of illumination. And so we have to be invariant to this kind of illumination, otherwise uh, it's very difficult. Let's say we train our model with the center image and then we are given something, test image which is a very different illumination, then we'll struggle, the algorithm will struggle, right? Even we also struggle, so what to save the algorithm. So it's a definitely a challenge, illumination variation is a challenge. Scale could also be a challenge, like let's say so much of scale variations, you train it on only one scale and if you don't account for multiple scale, multi-scale, then we will be in trouble. So scale is also one of the important challenges that we face. Deformation also, for example, we have these horses and most of the animal or humans, they are of all of us are deformable, which means that, um, which, which also creates challenge, right? We have seen, let's say, horses in one position, but when they are running, it will be, it will be a different shape. So that's also a challenge. So um, occlusion is also a challenge, like 
the object is there, but let's say there are some objects in front which is occluding it, then also doing recognition, detection, all those things can become a challenge. And then clutter also, for example, let's say we are interested in finding this particular insect, but if there is so much of clutter, then it's very difficult to detect. So clutter is also a big challenge, background clutter. clutter. So all of these are uh, various challenges that we need to look at. So our vision algorithm basically needs to be robust to all these challenges. Other is motion blur also, like if there are moving objects, then these kind of things can happen and then it will be very difficult to recognize. So this is also a challenge and uh, there are also intra-class variations. The same object, chair, but comes in sh so many shapes and all. So therefore it is like, let's say you train, the, let's say we train the algorithm using just one kind of chair, then of course it will fail in the other chair because so much of variation is there. So all of these are various challenges that we face. And so main thing is when we design our computer vision algorithms, we have to take all these challenges into account. Okay. So now we come to the focus of this course. So as we know, this is computer vision, that's for sure. But uh, so this, what we have is only four weeks. So we'll look at four topics of computer vision. One of them is the object recognition, where we assume that in the image, there is only one dominant object and we want to find out the class of that object or label for that object. The other problem is object detection, where, um, we are interested in localizing each of the object and also labeling them. This is more challenging than, of course, recognition. So these two are semantic problems. The third problem is the geometric problem, which is depth from a single vision. We are given a single image and then we want to extract depth. And the fourth one is more of a pre-processing. Like, for example, if you have a noisy image or image which is um, very low resolution or image which is blurred. So if you directly give it to the vision algorithms, maybe it will work, but many times it might fail. In that case, we should do simple pre-processing. So this is more like image processing, but we include it because it's also like we can think of it as a part of vision. So these are the four topics that we'll cover four weeks. And the first topic is object recognition. And, uh, and of course, our goal is to do all of them using deep learning, right? That's the goal. Mm -hmm.